title screen, National Park Service Arrowhead logo, Appomattox Courthouse National Historical Park. The outcomes of Surrender at Appomattox with Ranger Elisa. Hi, my name is Elisa Holland and I am a park guide here at Appomattox Courthouse National Historical Park. Behind me is the McLean House, which is a three-story brick building, Greek Revival slash Federal style house, where the surrender took place on April 9th of 1865. General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia would surrender to Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant's three federal armies here on the afternoon of April 9th of 1865. Now, those terms of surrender would be very important for other surrenders to come along, and which are that every man gets to be paroled. They get to go home as long as they promise not to pick up arms with any other Union Army. All officers get to keep their sidearms, which is their swords and their pistols, they get to keep their private baggage, and they get to keep their horses. Everything else, weapons, accoutrements, flags, government-issued pieces, would have to be given up over the next couple of days. And as long as you abide by your local laws once you got home, the United States government cannot touch you or bother you. Now, Lee is only surrendering 33 to 35,000 Confederates here, but they're still close to about 200,000 troops in the field. And with this, that domino effect of the other surrenders taking place uh, basically gets started. Joe Johnston will surrender uh, the Army of Tennessee in late April of 1865. Then you have Richard Taylor that will surrender in Alabama, Kirby Smith in Louisiana, and Stan Waddy in Oklahoma. And the last Confederate anything to surrender is the CSS Shenandoah that will surrender in Liverpool, England in December of 1865, basically ending any fighting that was taking place. Also to come out of this event is the continuation of death of the Confederate government. That process really starts on April 2nd of 1865 in Richmond, Virginia, which was the Confederate capital. But when Grant took Richmond and Petersburg on April 2nd, 3rd, the Confederate government had to leave and head toward Danville, Virginia, which is about an hour southwest of where we're at now. And uh, they continued to govern as much as they possibly can from that location until they hear about Lee's surrender on April 10th. And they start heading south, hoping to con continue the Confederacy in Texas. But President uh, Jefferson Davis is captured on May 10th of 1865 in Irwinville, Georgia, which is now a state historic site there. And you can, uh, and then basically that's the end of the Confederacy. So now you have all the Confederate armies out of the field. You have the Confederate government out of the field. Nothing is to stop uh, the 13th Amendment to be ratified. The 13th Amendment was passed in late January of 1865 to begin uh, basically, or to end slavery or uh, slavery in the United States. So, four million enslaved people being able to be freed if they could ratify it, and that's what's going to happen after three fourths of the states were able to pass it in December of 1865. Now, what would happen to those four million enslaved people? How? would they be able to live their lives now? All that would come about as we progressed past this point. But what else comes out of this? Well, Abraham Lincoln, president of the United States, hears about the surrender on April 9th of 1865 because, because of a telegraph that Grant is able to send. And by 9.01 p.m. that night, Washington, D.C. knows about what took place here. And he gives a speech on April 11th of 1865, uh, talking about what he sees for the future, what he's hopeful for. But unfortunately, uh, John Wilkes Booth is in the crowd, and he decides that he is going to assassinate not only Lincoln, but his whole entire cabinet. Now, Lincoln is assassinated on April 14th, and he dies at 7.22 in the morning the next day, and which brings in President Andrew Johnson and completely changes how Reconstruction was going to be run. None of those big things would be able to take place without Lee surrendering to Grant at the McLean House on April 9th of 1865.